So this is going to not only be an enlightening conversation, but a real fun one because I love the energy I got when I first met Dr. Dominic Nischwitz or just Dr. Dom for short. Uh, we connected at the Profound Health Summit in London last year, and then a few weeks later at the Biohacking Summit in Amsterdam. So I'm super excited for this one. And at first I thought Dr. Dom was just a dentist, but I later found out that he is a world-renowned specialist in biological dentistry, holistic odontology, and ceramic implants. And he's also the vice president of the ISMI, which is the International Society for Metal-Free Implantology. Um, and he's in this this in this organization actually has a mission to help as many people as possible to experience optimal oral health without the use of metal-based treatments. And this makes me think a little bit about braces and amalgam fillings, which hopefully we'll cover. Dr. Dom is also on the international speaking circuit where he shares his expertise on stage to get biological dentistry in the forefront of the industry. And he also wrote a book about it called It's All in Your Mouth. I love that title. And as a gerontologist, I love the intergenerational component that Dr. Dom has with his father. They co-founded the DNA Health and Aesthetic Center for Biological Dentistry in Tübingen, uh, Germany in 2015. And we're going to talk about the 5,000 ceramic implants that he's already performed and why he only uses this material. And as you're going to find out, um, very soon, Dr. Dom is much more than just teeth and dentistry. He's he's also really well trained in functional medicine and holistic nutrition and competitive sports. And if you are a dentist listening to this, you may want to learn more about his training course for dentists who are interested in biological dentistry. So now, without further ado, welcome Dr. Dom Nischwitz. How are you? Thank you ever so much, Sora, for having me and this amazing energy that you bring into this intro. Oh, it's great. It, I'm, I'm so glad we connected and, and I have not had this topic before. So I'm really excited to, to discuss this. And, you know, when I never thought of actually taking care of my overall health or optimizing my hormones by looking at my mouth or my oral health. So to me, the mouth was just a separate thing, which is now in retrospect, really ridiculous. It's like isolating the brain and saying mental health has nothing to do with physical health. And, and I grew up going to the dentist and he or she cleans my teeth and fills cavities and tells me how to brush and floss. And then I'm on my way until next year. It's quite an uneventful uh, moment. And, and most of us know that a dentist also does root canals, extracts wisdom teeth and gives implants. And that's pretty much the extent of my understanding of what dentists do. Uh, now, what's the difference uh, between this kind of dentist, which I'm guessing is 99.9% .9 of the dentists in the world and a biological dentist? Yeah, thank you for the question. Conventional dentistry is erroneously focused on repair. It's basically the drill, fill and bill business. And this is the way we all are trained in university. And in my case, the university was just the entrance card. And what we developed over the last, let's say, almost 15 years now is biological dentistry 2.0, which is the high tech, the melting pot or the overlap of the high tech dentistry repair. But it's melting with functional medicine and health optimization slash biohacking with the, with the goal of optimal health, which I believe starts in the mouth. So there are basically a few, let's say, knowledge gaps from traditional dentistry or conventional dentistry to what we do. For us, the mouth is the entrance to the body. It's the mirror to your overall health. And it's where life starts, so to speak. And obviously, you need to repair, but it's not only repair. And this is where we have the next level. So it's not against conventional dentistry. It's just more information about the whole body that starts in the mouth and how we can use more high-tech dentistry to repair and in the future, maybe even not need dental repair anymore. Oh, that would be amazing. Right? Yeah. You know, it makes, it reminds me when I was in my twenties, I remember going to the dentist and he said, you grind your teeth. I was like, really? You grind your teeth at night. I can tell, right? Dentists can see that. I didn't know. 
And so I said, okay, well, what, what do I do? Why? And he said, it's probably a stress response. And at the time my mother had passed away. So probably that makes sense. And so I, what, what happened was I said, then, well, how do I resolve this? And he said, I'll make you a mouth guard. <laughs> it was this big plastic chunk. I mean, you're in your twenties, you're like, I don't want to wear this thing. And I could never understand why he just didn't get to the root cause of the problem. Like, and I, you know, I, shouldn't I be resolving the stress? And so I'm guessing you as a biological dentist, wouldn't you, would you, or would you have a different approach to that person? For, grind, for grinding? Mm -hmm. Yes, obviously. So grinding, first of all, is not a, not a bad thing. It is kind of a stress relief of your body. The question is, where is this tension coming from? And this is mostly multifactorial. It could be related to your oral issues or previous dental repair, but I'm guessing with 20 years of age, it was more due to the wrong lifestyle, maybe partying, maybe lack of sleep, maybe lack of magnesium, maybe lack of certain nutrients that stress or that put you into more sympathetic nervous system instead of parasympathetic. You might have not been able to switch back and forth. And what a, what a splint actually does, besides protecting the, just the, the enamel from grinding down, it is kind of lifting your bite, which activates the, the vagal nerve. And therefore, it gives you a little bit of a parasympathetic kicking. So we would see whatever. And also, one question I would initially ask is if you had your wisdom teeth removed in your teens, because this is a, did you? Yeah, who hasn't, really? <laughs> yeah, this is, so I always ask three questions, as you know. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had metals in your mouth or do you have metals in your mouth? Have you ever had a root canal? And the number three is, did they remove your wisdom tooth? I actually asked this on the Health Optimization Summit in London last year. And this is a like this is the biggest and best event when it comes to biohacking and health optimization. And literally the whole audience was standing up. That means they're all trying to optimize, but they still haven't found the enemy number one that is subclinically causing stress. And having removed the wisdom teeth, most of the time ends in, in something called cavitations in layman's term. And this is something that you don't learn in university as a dentist, but those are basically chronic inflammation, chronic infections, chronic inflammations in your jawbone directly connected to your whole brain nerve because your teeth are an extension of your brain. It's trigeminal nerve. And if there's a stress in your jawbone, obviously you will grind a lot because of this stress. This is why this is something we always need to focus on. And the problem here is it's not taught in university. It's even that regular dentists say this is quackery. And this is mm -hmm. so bad because there are so many people suffering from chronic disease irritable tail bowel syndrome, eczema, grinding at night, depression, mental health issues, you name it because it's connected to everything and nobody knows where it's coming from. And mm -hmm. this is why cavitations in layman's terms or better FDOJ, fatty degenerative osteonecrotic jawbone is something we need to teach. What's and this that? is something I, I do like when I, when we repair or when patients come in and we do the all in one or the health starts in the mouth week, it's kind of like bed and breakfast that it's always included. We will always treat these cavitations. It's in the treatment plan for every patient because it's just such an incredible healing tool to remove a chronic inflammation. You know, chronic inflammation, chronic stress is killer number one. If you have it in your nervous system, the, the teeth, the, the, the brain nerve starts here. It's an extension of your brain. It's basically an inflammation in your brain 24 seven, cytokines, chemokines, toxins, parasites, viruses, even heavy metals in there. So it's really, really a big thing that you probably don't even know about. And mm. nobody has done it at least. And yeah. nobody in the dentistry. Yeah, no, it's the first time I heard of that fatty bone. I don't know what you said. Fatty. Fa fatty is a, it's also called NICO, but FDOJ would be the ideal description. Fatty degenerative osteonecrotic jawbone because this is what we see clinically when removing it. Cavitation when remove, is the layman's term of it. What's it called? Uh, the layman's term? Cavitations, like a cave, okay. cavitations. So is that different than a cavity? Like when we yes. think about eating too much sugar, there's yes. a cavity and you fill it, Cav right? Cavitations has nothing to do with a tooth decay or cavity. Cavitations 
uh, in your jawbone where there was a tooth. So cavitation can always happen after any sort of tooth removal. Which teeth are removed the most in the Western world? Yeah, wisdom teeth. And the wisdom teeth in Chinese medicine, every tooth is connected to the nervous system. Maybe you have seen my, my chart on Instagram. And the wisdom teeth are special. They are connected to your small intestine and heart meridian and your central nervous system and adrenal glands. And if you have now an ongoing chronic inflammation in your nervous system, attacking the trigeminous nerve and the nervous, the vagal nerve, which is your parasympathetic nerve, it could be that just because of this chronic inflammation, you are in chronic fight and flight. And whatever you do, you won't become superhuman because this is stressing you from the inside in your brain 24 seven. And it can lead to all sorts of symptoms, even so, breast cancer. Wow. So, okay. Then if somebody has this cavitation, it's not the normal cavity we're talking about. We're talking about if you extract a, a tooth and then you have the, the bone, I guess, go over your gums grow over. I'm not sure what, how that, how that happens. And then you it's sealed but you're saying that there's still a cavitation inside the bone and that can be causing a lot of inflammation but what go ahead no yes this is correct you have to see it mostly the problem is that most surgeons are trained to remove teeth quite fast because then it's a bit lucrative and insurance will cover it but what they never do is prepare the patient for that surgery it's all about the surgery. And most patients, when they are a teenager, for example, they are in hibernation mode. They have a lack of nutrients. Us, we probably ate the, I ate the 90s pantry, you maybe the 80s pantry. So lots of refined stuff, vitamin D3 deficiency, chronic depletion of nutrients. What happens is your body's in hibernation mode. The, the, the surgery is way too rough. So you basically can't heal. The only thing that happens is like you said, gum, and, and a little bit of bone on top, but inside no sponges bone, but fatty, really fatty tissue in the bone. And what Dr. Lechner, he's the, the Yoda of the cavitations. He's already 72 years old and friend of mine, he did all the research. What he found there within the 40 years is chronic elevated cytokines, a special chemo kind, we can talk about this in a second, parasites, tons of heavy metals, especially if you had mercury fillings, it tends to accumulate in there viruses, retroviruses. So it's really a dumping area for your body. And then you have to see in there is the trigeminal nerve that goes, that starts in the brainstem and goes till here. The trigeminous nerve is also to here and to here. And the parasympathetic nerve is called vagus runs with it. And if there is toxins or parasites or virus surrounding this nerve 24 seven, it gets transported retrograde into your nervous system. And from there with or a blood supply within 24, within a minute throughout the whole body. So you basically are stressing your body, your immune system, your nervous system, and also obviously the liver and whatever with these things. Problem is they are silent. It's a silent chronic inflammation. And you know, chronic inflammation, chronic stress is killer number one when it comes to our epidemic, which is not the pandemic. The epidemic is chronic disease for more than 20 years. Mm. Mental health issues are at the forefront. Okay. So if I understand correctly, there is this inflammation that is coming from this cavitation. And you said it's a silent killer. So I'm, I'm wondering then, can you have this inflammation going on and not feel it and not go... Yes. And this is the problem. It's a silent inflammation. And 90, let's say 90% of all patients won't feel a thing because it's chronic. And the only thing your body can do when it, when it get, when something is chronic and has no solution, it basically gets lazy and dumps down the, the receptors and you don't feel it. You might have pain after the removal of the tooth for two weeks, but then your dentist gave you antibiotics and local things and it finally healed but it didn't really heal. So you have a trigger that's called a neuromodulative trigger or an interference field. You don't even know about it. You don't feel it, but you might can't lift your arm or you have an eczema or ill tail bowel syndrome, or you're depressed because in there are cytokines that communicate systemically. In there are viruses, parasites, even mold in the US. Mold is a huge issue. 
I have a lot of patients flying in from the US and I remove these cavitations and there's mold spores living in there. So mm. it's really, really nasty. And there's only one, one specific cavitation called NICO. It's called neuralgia inducing cavitational osteonecrosis. And this implicates that you have massive neuralgia pain. But this is only very, I would say it's very rare, less than 20%. But what this is, that, is how like headaches? Had it, what, how does that manifest? You said, is it the, the, headaches? The, the, or? the most massive uh, uh, migraines and headaches that you can imagine. Hmm. What about actually, ringing? Some people have ringing in their head. Yeah, or, yeah, but ringing in their head or let's say tinnitus is not that bad. So really neuralgia is really trigeminal pain. Let's say a hardcore migraine. Mm-hmm. And I know of, somebody who has this, go ahead. A lot of people suffer from migraines and don't know why. It could be their cavitation. Could be the mouth. And I'm wondering, I have a, I have a friend who's somebody I know who has, um, she says she feels electricity in her brain. Would that be a clue of a cavitation? She has, she's electro hypersensitivity. As she, as she sleeps, she yeah. feels like electricity in her brain. I'm not really sure what that means, but I'm wondering now oh, I'm making me think maybe it's cavitation. Mm, could be elect- it could be that she is electro hypersensitive. So I wouldn't say it's necessarily just a cavitation. Could be cavitations. Could be the metals in her mouth. Could be root canal toxins. Could be also, and like for example, if you had mercury fillings or any metals, they accumulate in your brain and in your nervous system, turning into micro antenna. And if then you get electro hypersensitive. There are even people that can find you in radio stations because of their metals. Any metal in your mouth or in your body is going to be an antenna. That's just basic electrophysics. Or like, like yeah. Simple it, fi- <laughs> so, okay. I, I think most people listening probably had their wisdom teeth taken out. So if they're not feeling any um, pain or not complaining, they just come to see you for a cleaning, would you recommend that they open this all up, uh, clean out the cavitation, assuming that there's uh, inflammation there? So you have to see... My patients are coming specially for this. The problem is if you go to a regular dentist, they don't even know about cavitation, so you will never find. I, I, would, I would say it this way. So if you have any chronic health issue or you do everything and you're not superhuman and you know there is more to it, then it is time to look for the three oral health killers that we always diagnose in our preliminary treatment plan, metals in your mouth, root canals, cavitations. With us, it's always included because I don't do, my goal is not repairing only your teeth. My goal is your optimal health. So I'm not dealing with one tooth and doing a a cavity. I'll see the whole panoramic x-ray and give you a preliminary treatment plan where you will know, okay, this is step one, two, three, and four, what we're going to do in our clinic to help you reach the next level. And obviously those are covered because they're insanely extreme. I had them myself and it took me five years. Um, and I was this guy grinding extremely. I even had my face was like super, like, let's say one side was tiny. The other one was big because I was grinding on one side more, very stressed. My whole neck was like this tense all the time. I had eczema and everything and nobody knew what I had. And it wasn't my nutrition because as soon as you have skin issues, everybody <laughs> will point and tell you it's your nutrition you shouldn't eat meat or whatever yeah like you know how it is <laughs> but i'm i'm as you know i'm very good with nutrition so it wasn't the nutrition and anecdotally i was in the clinic very stressed out and there was a, a doctor to shadow us actually a naturopathic doctor and he tested me with art autonomic response testing this is kinesiology i'm also an art practitioner trained by Dietrich Klinghardt. And so I was familiar with it and he tested me and he's like, there is something going on in your jawbone. There is an interference. Let's do a cone beam, which is a three-dimensional x-ray. So as we were in the clinic anyways, we just did it. And there they were, there, they, there it was like it in front of my eyes, like the biggest cavitation you could imagine. And then it ringed in my ears, in my, in my brain, I was like, Dietrich Klinghardt told me the best surgeons have the biggest cavitations. And I was never expecting that I was a good surgeon, probably, because I didn't expect me to have cavitations. But I was like, oh, wow, there's maybe this could be my solution for my skin and my stress. And my already was quite nervous in the early 30s with my hands. 
I was thinking I get Parkinson's or whatever. So obviously I wanted to be patient number one, patient zero to try out everything. And we started with one side because I didn't know it was better to do both sides at all. So we started with one side, but only this one side during surgery, I had to laugh. I was with my surgeon. I was like, is it possible that my chronic back pain right about here is just disappearing? I just had to laugh. I was like, that's not possible. Right. And on the next day I woke up and my hand wasn't um, shaking anymore. So, but my skin was still bad. So I was obviously waiting for the other side and hoped, I was hoping that it has to do with the other side. So six weeks later, we did the other side. And 10 days after that surgery, I was a skin model. So everything was back to how I wanted to have it for 10 years before and never basically had it. And obviously, if you experience these things on your body, you cannot withhold it from patients. In my opinion, I have the moral obligation to tell you, inform you, if you don't want to do it, okay, I'm fine, but at least I have to give my best. And therefore, this is one thing we always have as an enemy, or I always say health killer in quotation marks, because it's such a big relief. So I could tell you so many anecdotes from patients that were seeing 29 doctors and had the craziest things. We repaired their mouths without metals, root canals, cavitations, and they finally resolved their biggest issues and could start to heal. This is so, really insane. So I have another question then, because you said you had several cavitations. Is that all these cavitations come from your wisdom teeth? In my case, yes, because I have perfect teeth. I have no tooth decay, never had any. The only thing I had, I had braces twice, and I had my wisdom teeth removed when I was 14 years old and it was a very rough surgery and obviously I was the 90s kid eating only crap food smoking cigarettes right after surgery probably so <laughs> there was no preparation at all it was just my mom was telling me tomorrow is your scheduled uh, wisdom tooth removal I'll bring you there and that's it and it was kind it's kind of normal still that this is allowed in school so it's kind of like when you're 14 or 15 you have a week's leave because you have your wisdom teeth to be taken out in the Western world, which is insane. Yeah. In the US, when I grew up, it was like in your 20s, you were 21 or something like that. And my kids that happened at the same age. And now I'm feeling really guilty because, well, the dentist told me they needed their wisdom teeth out. So we took it out. And my son had a ton of other teeth taken out too. And I'm just feeling, yeah, really horrible now. <laughs> so 21 is definitely better because you're already grown up because these teeth are connected to your central nervous system. So you don't grow as much if you take out the two. But the problem is you have to take these teeth out. So for me, I wouldn't have never, I would have never had the space for it. Mm. So when it comes to changing the way how things are, we have to start way sooner, way earlier. We have to teach parents basically before getting pregnant, because this is when jaw, jaw growth happens with breastfeeding. Mm. And then from there on, when you're 15 years old and you start and your, your wisdom teeth are already impacted, you have no chance then going to the dentist and remove them. But I have developed protocols that will help prepare you and post-care you so you, that you don't at least develop cavitations so you can take out wisdom teeth safely. But nobody knows about it. So only the ones I train. So it's still um, something that is almost not heard of so I, I train um systemic bone growth so to speak or how to get your body to build tissue mm. so interesting then uh you would you would still recommend people to take out their wisdom teeth it's just there's a way to do it you have to take out your wisdom teeth unfortunately in the western world because of our lifestyle it's a lifestyle issue it is a sign of a degeneration you go to Africa in a rural country where they live their normal life. They have perfect teeth. They have wide jaws, wide nose. There is no sign of uh, cavitation. Look at a book from Weston Price, uh, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. He already knew it 100 years ago. Hmm. Eating processed foods, eating soft foods, not chewing anymore, eating the wrong stuff, being depleted for years will lead to facial and postural um disorder yeah there's the breathing thing as well poor breathing poor breathing habits starts with the it starts with breastfeeding the breathing yeah this is super interesting i okay i have to move on to the next question because i have so many other ones that just keep popping up um 
So, okay, you talked about the three hidden killers several times, and uh, it was root canals, metals, and um, the the last one was cavitations. Cavitations. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to the the um, the the amalgams, I guess, the metal. This is why, you know, when you said, I, I kind of think of braces, but then that's kind of temporary thing. But now people in who are listening are women are over 50 and some of us have cavities and they have amalgams. And so that's what we're talking about when you're thinking about metals in the mouth. Is that correct? Yes. When we talk about metals in the mouth, we're not just talking about amalgams. We talk about amalgam, different alloys, gold fillings, gold-based ceramic crowns, titanium implants, also braces, also metal wirings, all metals, yeah? Obviously, metals come with different challenges. So we have the toxicity of the material. Then there is an immunological component, meaning how is your immune system dealing with it? Are you maybe allergic to it? Which means it's not dose-dependent anymore. Toxicology is always dose yeah, poison is dose dependent. And then the third component we already touched on is it's an antenna. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. So the antenna, and you're, so the way that I understand it, that these metals are disrupting the system. So we need to remove these metals from our mouth. Is that correct? In my opinion, when optimal health is your goal, you should be metal free these days because we have 3G, 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi everywhere. You don't want to be a living antenna. And also we can do better. But if you start to hop on this journey, it's important to find a skilled practitioner who knows how to remove and replace these safely. So for the example of amalgam, amalgam are these silver fillings. Mm -hmm. They were for years, they were marketed as silver fillings. And up until 2018, they were allowed to call them silver fillings in the US, which is total bullshit because 50% is mercury. Mercury is in that filling and is and it's the most toxic, non-radioactive element known to men. Why would somebody put this in a human or if he knows better, drill it just out? So we can do so much better. I've never placed an amalgam filling. I removed a ton, unfortunately, at the beginning without protecting me, but the patient. So I intoxicated me personally a lot and um, with mercury and heavy metals. It's, the, it's really bad. So when you want to take out mercury and heavy metals, find a skilled practitioner, practitioner to do so because it's the most danger will always happen when you just go to a conventional dentist to say, I want to drill it just out. Because then obviously you will have way more mercury vapor in your system than just by wearing them on a daily basis. Don't yeah. do this. Come up with the strategy first. Yes. Okay. This is what happened to me. <laughs> it was about 10 or I don't know, maybe 15 years ago. I first heard about get rid of this mercury, went to the dentist and I only read later on that there was a procedure. I had stuff flying all over the place. I'm probably so toxic now. So, I, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. What would somebody have to do to detox from that? And even this, I mean, for me, it's like 10 years ago. I don't know if that's that still impacts. So I see a lot of chronic sick patients over the years that when they got really sick, it happened because of the unsafe amalgam removal. So um, the problem is, Obviously, you need to detox or measure first what you need to detox at one point. But as long as you still have the other health killers in your mouth, the root canals and the cavitations, that cavitations harbor a lot of mercury and heavy metals, you don't want to detox or open up detox pathways. That would lead to redistribution and make it worse. It would be like showering and wearing clothes at the same time. So <laughs> that makes, but in a in a in a very unhealthy way. So you need to have a, a strategy. The way we do it is you come in for a, so we plan your case, the full case, preliminary online. You send your panoramic x-ray and I basically draw in what we're going to do, remove all the metals safely, take out all the root canals, place ceramic implants and take out all the cavitations in one week. It's called health optimization week or optimal health starts in the month, whatever. Use all the different tools to make that happen. And then 
I'll give you the right nutritional design, the food design concept and the bone healing protocol four weeks before and up to three to four months after until you heal and you already start to detox while I'll take out the stuff from your mouth. It's the biggest detox you will ever have mm. is taking the stuff out, the, the raw material. And, mm. I, and then I support your body, your liver and your, let's say your biochemistry with binders and everything passively so that your body is just better in detoxing and removing it. And then when you come back and we see, is everything healed in? Did you grow bone? Then it's time where I work with a functional medicine practitioner who will then see, okay, do we need to dig deeper and find out, do you have a lot of heavy metals stored in the cell? So why we don't do this at the same time? Because if I would, would start a hefty detoxification program, let's say chelation, while at the same time building your jawbone, we would build something and destroy it at the same time because we need minerals and all these things to detox, but also to build bone. So mm -hmm. first, an anabolism. But the good thing is taking out all that crap in your mouth is such a huge detoxification that every single patient snaps into parasympathetic mode when they're in this week. And then obviously to heal further, we use hyperbaric. We have IV protocols, different we take blood to spin it to use PRP. So this is really the health optimization biohacking part that comes in. It's more like a health optimization, health optimization clinic, but starting in the mouth with an all-in-one concept that is designed to really never see the dentist again at one point. Yeah, it's all been done. You learn how to eat and how to, to eat and have the right lifestyle forever. So that you never need a cavity again, because nature has it right. A cavity in the first place is the problem. Yeah. Why did you lose your tooth? Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. So going back to the amalgams that it's better not to even touch it if you're not going to do it done correctly. Is that correct? It is correct. Because if you don't touch it, you have a, a, you have a tiny intoxication. It's about two to three microns per day. Still, it's the biggest source of chronic mercury intoxication is the amalgam filling mm -hmm. our outside environment isn't mercury free anymore it's not possible but the biggest source is still the mercury filling in your mouth mm -hmm. so you will intoxicate yourself you can compensate a lot with binders and things definitely don't remove it if it's not done by a professional who knows how to do it safely yeah it's like a slow drip poison if you just sit let it sit there yeah so, yeah exactly. so i want to go then to yeah, this this podcast is dedicated to optimizing hormonal balance through the mouth. Yes. So let's let's talk a little bit about that. I, I do want to talk about the root canals and crowns and things like that too. And because that's sort of that's happens as we age. It's not unusual that this is what's going on. Actually, a friend of mine yesterday had a crown put in and she's only 50 you know, early fifties. So what is, how does this health optimization or, or hormone, hormone optimization get done through the mouth? It's quite simple. If you understand what I explained the last couple of minutes is what is stress in your body? Chronic stress will activate your, your, let's say stress axis is the pituitary, hypothalamus, pituitary and adrenal axis. You have heard of that? Mm-hmm. So if there's toxins from your teeth, from your root canals or chronic infections from dead teeth or cavitations, this will ongoingly put you in stress mode. What happens? Your body needs to compensate with cortisol, stress hormones, adrenaline, noradrenaline. What happens? There is something called pregnenolone steel. You might have heard of it. No. And what happens? Pregnenolone is a precursor no. to your estrogen, your, to your progesterone, to your hormones, also to testosterone. Yeah, so but if the you're steel. in stress mode 24 7, 20, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, if in your 50s, maybe 20, 30 years, you depleted the precursors for your hormones mm. and you have totally different menopausal symptoms than somebody who lives in Africa and has never seen any dentists from the inside because he was just living his natural life, has no tooth decay, nothing, because there's no stress. So you have health, like splinters in your mouth that are not just toxic, they're, they're activating your immune system, they're stressing your nervous system and deplete your hormones over time. So yes, it could be from all the oral health killers that your hormones are not functioning anymore. And it's actually quite simple. So the, the WHO last year said 70% of all chronic 
health issues start in the mouth. And you just have to understand the, how, how the whole health matrix works. And then you know, if you have something that is chronic, it will deplete you and your hormones mm. because it's all one thing. Mm. So the root canal could be the splinter that holds you back from becoming pregnant, for example. I had a lot of patients like this. And you, if you want, I can give you one anecdote lately from a follower of mine. She is a gynecologist, but turned into a naturopath over time. And she went to see me for her all-in-one surgery, like cavitations, a couple of root canals. And then I followed her on Instagram and saw that he, she was pregnant. And I just texted her and said, oh, wow, congrats on your, on your newborn. And she's like, I blame this all on you, guy. Because right after our surgery, I finally got pregnant. And this happens so often that people are in stress. The body cannot be in yin mode because of this. It's yang, it's stress, it's all tense. It's chronic war zone. And your hormones work, don't work because your body needs to be chilled. And then you can't get pregnant. Same for menopause. It's the same thing. It's just later, later stage. So menopause in the Western world is a big thing. Everybody feels bad. And this is because you're so toxic, because the hormones are so out of balance, because you're so living so unnatural. And what is the most unnatural thing in your body that you cannot biohack your way around? What? It's health killers. It's metals, root canals, cavitations. That's why I always say, if you try everything already, and you are maybe even on HRT, but you still feel bad or have mental health issues or have dry skin or the opposite, maybe it's your mouth. And then you look at the panoramic exit and then you're like, oh my, why did I not go see that for the last 30 years? Why? Because nobody talks about it. That's why I come in. Mm. So, okay. Now I see this very interesting, never would have put that those two together. And I, and I like how you, you approach yet, yeah, even you're optimizing your health, you're doing everything you can, and you're still not, you're still feeling bad for one reason or another, what could it be? And this is what could be the missing piece to certain health issues. So I, I love this approach and gets people thinking. So let's go into um, the ceramic implants because you're a specialist in this. And I remember at the Profound Health Conference, uh, we had a, a doctor present uh, about ceramic uh, ceramic versus titanium. And, uh, and I know you know a lot about that. And so it's in this biohacking world not to use titanium. What's the problem? Titanium is the gold standard in replacing missing teeth for 40 years. But if you look at it, it's just a metal screw. Mm -hmm. titanium is a metal it's covered by titanium dioxide which is a let's say um a surrounding that is kind of a ceramic but it's still metal so it's not electrically neutral your immune system will be attacking it there's a thing called tight it's not a titanium allergy it's more a titanium sensitivity and this also happens because of the titanium dioxide that is in all white things, toothpaste, um, what is this, makeup, chewing gums, everything white coating is titanium dioxide, which is forbidden in Europe for two years, but I think in the US it's still there. And this is why your immune system is already primed. So we have a metal again, and also these metals come in different grades. So you as a, as a patient, or even me as a doctor, I will never know what is really in that titanium because the titanium grade six has nickel in it. And you know, nickel, most people are allergic to nickel. So now you place a titanium in your jawbone, right next to your nerve, in your, in your body. It's not outside body anymore. Your tissue is outside. You're not swallowing, you're not sucking on it. You have it in your bone. And now your immune system is activated 24 seven. And this is why we see so much chronic inflammation around a titanium implant because the tissue doesn't get connected it's called peri-implantitis and if your tissue the gum isn't tight around your tooth or your implant you now have leaky gum which is an opening for all the oral bacteria that can jump in this is how you find oral pathogens in your synovial fluid of your hip joint so it's really something to consider most people still tolerate it, kind of. But there's even studies showing if you have a phone call with a titanium implant, the bone gets heated up 
up to three to four degrees. This is why I, when we, I remove all the titanium implants because patients come for this and replace it with a ceramic implant. And always, literally in 99% of all cases, you have a chronic inflammation and cavitation surrounding these titanium implants. It's really another immune trigger that maybe wasn't an issue in the 90s, but now where everything is loaded, it's going to be an antenna and toxic. So for 10 years now, I'm a specialist in ceramic implant. I was just an early adopter because my concept of biological dentistry as a surgeon was... I had that already, but I didn't know a solution for root canals and titanium implants, but I like to do surgeries. So luckily I found ceramic implants and ever since then I have never done anything else. And the good thing is um, most of the time I'm able to remove root canals and dead teeth and titanium implants and simultaneously place a ceramic implant. Hmm. What is the, the ceramic implant for me is also just a tool in the toolbox. I would love to have your natural teeth and don't need to do any implant. But if you look at the at, at all your friends' x-rays, you will see they need a lot of ceramic implants because they have so much bad things in there. So I'm happy that we have this tool. And the good thing about it is it's aesthetically more pleasing. It's white. Zirconium dioxide, it's made of, is a ceramic that is actually a healing stone. And your body will just osteointegrate it. That means your body grows onto it with real bone if your body is able to heal. So it's electrically neutral. So you can have your phone call, whatever. It's just growing in there. Only if you are not prepared very well, very well with not the right lifestyle and nutrition, then it might not heal as easily. But mm -hmm. if you know all these things, and this is the one, the, the thing I'm teaching, the food design, the bone healing protocol, then they osteointegrate. And uh, you have a perfect neutral tooth replacement. And this is why, luckily, I did so many over the year, last year. So, What's uh, the average age of somebody getting uh, implants that you're seeing in your practice? The average age, well, it could start from early 20s. I would say the average is probably 45 to open end hmm. Hmm. it seems kind of early i don't know you just for, do me a favor and from now on you ask all your friends do you have a root canal did you get your wisdom teeth removed do you have any metal in your mouth just ask just for curiosity you will see i can never be able to help many people on my with my own hands that's why i decided to train dentists young and wilds to also apply biological dentistry the way we do it with an overall health concept because patients are suffering out there mm -hmm. and there is a solution and it's actually a very charming solution we have because you fly in and we have to do it all at once obviously you need to come in another time but for example do you have a root canal no you don't right no you have a titanium implant no but you had your wisdom teeth removed yeah yeah so you will maybe come in at one point and i'll do your cavitation surgery yeah. And then, and then you, and then you feel, and then you see, oh, wow, this is what caused my chronic shoulder issue. Or this is why I wasn't in deep sleep. Or this is why my brain was foggy all the time. You see, mm -hmm. like you have to experience to see what's really happening because it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Everyone acts sim has the same issue maybe, but the symptoms are totally different. Yeah. No, my question what was, how, what was the average age for ceramic implants? Yeah, yeah that's the yeah. average age. That is? Wow. Let's say the average age is probably starting about 40. Wow. 45 to open end means could be an 85 year old patient that I'd still do ceramic implants. I, st I also already did ceramic implants for 20 year old, old pa patients. Wow. You don't do it because, yeah, actually, there's a lot of people, a lot of kids getting root canals because the, the new teeth are sometimes a bit too big. So they have their the typical bike where they mm. bite into their bike or fly over it and then they ruin this tooth. You don't usually do a ceramic implant or any sort of implants until they've grown up. But as soon as they've grown up, let's say 21 years of age, we can do ceramic implants. So let's mm. say from 20, but the average, the average is probably 40 plus. Is it because of they want perfect white teeth or is it because they have degeneration of their teeth and it's just something you can't bite into an apple without a tooth falling out or something? You mean the implants? Yes. This is the typical dental career. You get a cavity, then you get a filling. 
then maybe it was the amalgam. Then the tooth breaks or you get a root canal. Then the root canal gets infected. Then you need an implant. That's a mm. typical career. So the ideal scenario is obviously that we don't lose health and teeth because nature has it right. An optimal healthy body is immune against tooth decay if you have your nutrition and everything covered. Mm. I have all perfect teeth. I don't need, obviously, if I get smacked and somebody re- uh, smacks out my front tooth, I need an implant. Mm-hmm. But besides this, my teeth are hard as stone. Mm. They are not mushy, but we get weak. Our bones, everything in our teeth. It's because of our convenient lifestyle. We don't even chew anymore. So mm. the dent, it's a dental career is the problem. Metals or fillings and then a bigger hole. Or the, because the dentist, like you said, the dentist doesn't explain to you that the tooth has, the tooth decay is normally the dentist tells you it's because of your poor hygiene but the Mm -hmm. oral hygiene theory is just not correct it starts with your lifestyle and nutrition you actually don't need to brush your teeth if everything is fine Uh, (laughs) you see yes all about teaching but you actually have to start young Yes, exactly. So, well, okay. I still have so many questions, but I'm going to open up the panel uh, to the the audience because I've been hogging all the questions and I want you to get home, uh, get your son <laughs> into bed. No so, worries. You can, always, and, you can always do a second one. No problem. Yeah, we have to. There's one question though that I got, uh, well, there's actually a couple of questions I got from um, people who cannot make it here. So I'll just ask one before we open the mic. One of them is, what are your thoughts on the SMART system s-m-a-r-t from the i-a-i-a-o-m protocol i don't know what that is but there's the question yeah (laughs) basically the i-a-o-m-t is the is kind of a biological dentistry organization in the u.s and i would always recommend to remove amalgam to find a dentist that is smart certified smart stands for safe metal amalgam removal technique that's Mm. it got it go for somebody like this if you want to have your amalgams replaced Okay. Doesn't mean he's a full biological dentist that does what we do, but at least he will remove the metal safely. Got it. Okay, Magdalena. We always start with her. She's got great questions, and then and then we can move on to everybody else. Thanks, Magdalena, for always Hello. sharing my Hello, content. Hello, Dominique. Hi, How are you? So nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you. I don't actually have problems here because I think my teeth are perfect. Uh, but uh, Joe, I think he has some questions. Hey guys, yeah, thanks for the amazing information. Yeah. Uh, Magdalena has been warning me about dead teeth. If you could speak a bit more about that. Dead teeth are the root canals. Do you have root canals? I have this, is this. Uh-huh, that, uh-huh, that's what it's called, root canal. Yeah, I've got three dead teeth and Magdalena is saying I should get them taken out. And The thing is, I would always come up with a solid strategy. Like I discussed before, when you come to see us, I would I would need to see your panoramic x-ray to have a full view of all your teeth. Right. And then I would plan, you get an email where, they, where you see exactly what we do. Don't just go to any dentist and take out a root canal without any, without any um, replacement. Why? Because when you take out a tooth, your whole <clears throat> socket collapses and you might yeah. need to have a bone graft then. So what we do, if possible, I take out your tooth, disinfect with ozone, clean everything, use PRP and place the ceramic implant, ceramic implant straight away. So you can always be happy to send you panoramic x-ray. It's, um, we don't charge for this. It's just um, preliminary, but we will also check for the metals, the root canals, the dead teeth are the root canals and the cavitations that we already talked about. Have you had your wisdom teeth removed? No, good. No, yeah, never had a problem with that. But uh, so but they are, they are grown out. They are grown out. Yes, yes, most of them, I believe, not all of them. Okay, yeah. we have to see on the X-ray. But but I'm very wise anyway. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's, okay. That's, that's very good. So I just sorry, I just asked the dentist. Did you say for the full panoramic uh, scan? Or? So basically, go on our website. Um, new patient sections, DN aesthetics, and then you ask your dentist for a panoramic x ray. That's it. You send this with the medical questionnaire and say you come through this um, thing, and I put you up on the waiting list and send you a, a preliminary treatment plan. And so you know exactly what the steps are. Brilliant. Thank you very much. No problem. And you don't have any root canals, anything, Magdalena? No, I'm just without wisdom teeth. 
and I was around, I think, 24 years old because they were growing like into my bone here and it was really yeah. painful. So I was really like forced to yes. remove them. So you can be sure in 99% like um, Zora that you have cavitations, uh -huh. FDK, which are like we discussed, chronic silent inflammation in your jawbone maybe causing you issues that you don't even feel at that spot. But so how can you notice if you, if you do maybe some blood test, CRP or not necessarily, no, because, not necessarily. You would need so you could do one test. It's called a Rantis, R A N T S. It's a specific chemo kind, CCL five. But this is um, not all doctors do it. Um, usually, what we need to do is a three dimensional X ray. It's called a cone beam. But if I have a panoramic and I know your wisdom teeth are removed. And I, I can see it on a panoramic preliminary and then plan your case. But just from experience, I have done more than, even more than the ceramic implants, probably five, 6,000 cavitation surgeries since yeah. the last 10 years. And you don't know if you, I could, you could open up a miracle healing clinic and only do this. And people were like, this is not possible. Why? Like you come to me for surgery and on the chair, sometimes emotional trauma opens up. Sometimes you can breathe again or you go in parasympathetic. Every single patient has some sort of um, health improvement. And this is the fulfilling part on my side. Um, the surgery is not that bad, actually. But what, we, what I basically do is open this up, clean it out, use ozone, use membranes that we made out of your blood, make it acute again so that your body now knows, okay, now I can heal it with the mm -hmm. nutrients I have, with the nutrition and everything. And then this is gone and you have more energy or whatever. You're kind of healthy. That means you can just optimize your health and then see from there. For example, my brother, he's very, very healthy. And he reduced his sleep by 45 minutes just by doing this, which is wow. a lot. Wow. Wow. Uh -huh. Of course. This is a lot. And I personally had the skin issues, the nervousness, all the other things. For me, it was a big thing. Actually, all my friends come in and all my a lot of dentists, a lot of practitioners um, to do this because they realize, oh wow, why would I have a chronic inflammation in my jawbone that never heals? In the jawbone, like if you have a hole in your arm that is like a centimeter deep and like one cubic centimeter, you would freak out. But your arm actually is not important for your body. It doesn't even matter. But now yeah. you have it in your jawbone where your nervous system, your trigeminal nerves run through and transports whatever is in there, parasites, virus, fungi, cytokines in your nervous system. And whatever you experience on a daily basis could be from this. So this is something I could never yeah. in anybody's, in, if I see it, in I have each color. Color. Huh? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, no, no. Because I have a, we have a, I have an itch, you know, like, but it it could come from my teeth because they never managed to find out why. Like, yeah. And interestingly, no, it's it's interesting. Yeah. 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 Interestingly, uh, my my cavity was okay. I, I I got COVID, and I got a huge inflammation on my dead tooth, you know. And there's a big point, and there's new studies coming out. And this is remember two years ago when we didn't know when COVID hit. Why so many healthy people die fast? Mm -hmm. Now we know there's good research showing that if you have leaky gum, which is a lot of times around metals, around implants, around root canals, that is a little bit bleeding. It's the opening where the virus can come in in your system faster than if you have a healthy mouse. It's really open. And I can see here is Megan, Megan Schell. She's in here. Megan is my patient. She can probably also answer. She had also cavitations and all these things. So. Um, it's really, really powerful stuff and nobody talks about it. And it is the centerpiece is your brain and your nervous right. system. The eyes and your teeth is the extension of your brain. This is really unbelievable. Yeah. And great. Anyway, not to keep you too long. Thank you very much. Like, no worries. You just um, send your data and tell me, right. tell me your name. Jo Joseph. And the last name? Rain, as in the rain. Uh just if you, in the rain i can remember this but if this a lot of inquiries so if you send the panoramic and the medical questionnaire you find it on our webpage. just just um they, they will ask where did you find me then just say 
Okay. Interview Zora, and then I know. Okay, okay. fantastic. They have a they have a little bit of an anchor in my brain. Right. Oh my God, Dominic! Now it's uh, this is another topic I was never thinking about. You know, I thought everything is fine, but now I will start <laughs> be worrying. <laughs> okay. Cavitations. So gut health starts in the mouth. Yeah. This one is directly connected. So there's tons of people having SIBO. This is small intestine yeah. bowel overgrowth or bloatings or whatever. And this is the nervous system part for your small intestine. Some people have internal coldness. They're always freezing. I do the surgery and suddenly they have warm hands because it's the heart meridian. And I have one last anecdote for you guys. It's one of this, I'm just popping up. One of my biological dentists um, that I trained, a, a woman, I don't know, I met her six years ago and she had a, she had heart rhythm, heart, what is it in English? Her arrhythmia. heart rhythm was arrhythmia. Arrhythmia, yeah. yeah. A, a palpitation, arrhythmia. And she was, or, she was like early 30s and she was already scheduled for an open heart surgery. This wow. is crazy, right? Crazy, crazy. And then we said, okay, let's do a cone beam because we knew she had her wisdom teeth removed. And I know the wisdom tooth area is directly connected with the heart meridian and the small intestine. It's the same in Chinese medicine. So we said, okay, an open heart surgery versus looking into your mouth, which is quite minor. Let's start with the easy version, right? You can call her straight away and she will tell you she never had an open heart surgery. It's all gone. It's all beautiful. Wow. And this was, and this is, nobody knows about it. It's insane. Yeah. And crazy. Yeah. Wow. Where are anyway, you based? I think everybody that comes to see me we'll will... Dominique, will, where are you based in Germany? You fly to Stuttgart. This is south. Stuttgart. Of okay. Stuttgart. And then it's about 25 minutes and Tübingen is the town. Mm -hmm. I think okay. Sora will probably have the links. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I'll have all anyway, the links. Or I'll switch off so I let you guys get back to your kids. Like, yeah. No stress. <laughs> Sora, you can also well. connect these guys, your friends with me on WhatsApp, and then I funnel in you guys quite fast. That's no yeah. problem. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. guys. No worries. I'm happy yeah. to help. One question I have before, I want to hear from Megan, but I, I'm wondering, with all the first step to this is you get these uh x-rays or 3d uh two dimensional it's just two a di oh two di two dimensional panoramic uh x-ray x-ray have you ever looked at the x-ray and said oh there is no cavitations don't need to do it i always ask if i always look if there's the wisdom teeth removed if they're removed i plan it and then you come in there's mostly more to do and then you come in and if i then do the cone beam you be it's you in the clinic then and if there's maybe instead of four cavitations, there's only three, we will only do three. Hmm. So I'll never do more. But usually, nine, that's why I say 99% of all cases, I'm quite right. Hmm. And because it's just the problem is the surgery in itself wasn't prepared. We were in hibernation mode. And it's quite sure that I, I, would, I would actually bet money that you have big cavitations hmm. and you don't even know about it. I'll send you my x-rays. <laughs> Sure. Send it straight away, and I'll do planning for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go soon, but I would love to hear from Megan. She has some experience with you. If yes. if you're willing to talk, Megan, um, what was your experience like? Hi, Megan. Hi. Um, so I went back in October. Um, I had four cavitations. I actually still have two that I'm getting removed in like two weeks, actually. Um, but so I had uh jaw surgery a year ago. So I had some metal plates in my jaw from that surgery, which I've gotten some of them removed now. So now I can go back and get these other cavitations removed. And then I also had from that surgery, uh, I had a tooth that died. So I got a ceramic implant for that tooth. Mm. So what was, did, you're happy with the experience? Was it what yeah. you expected? Was it Painful. It was, <laughs> no, actually, like it was really, everything was super easy. Um, the experience was really great. And I just, I found it really interesting being I'm in the United States that um, the whole approach just is so different from what I could find here. And just kind of the considering the whole treatment plan and the whole healing process as being really key instead of just like doing a surgery and kind of sending you off to, you know, on your own, the uh, focus on what you need to do to actually get a good outcome with the healing was, I thought that was just, 
it just was really great and it was really uh, different from what I've experienced here mm. with conventional dentists. That says a lot considering you're American and I'm American and we're all about our teeth. Like our teeth are super important. <laughs> like I don't know why we have such a big, like such a big importance on it and, and as opposed to other areas that I've lived in. And so I think that says a lot. Um, so it's it's because there's quite a high standard already in the US. So thank you so much, Megan. I, I appreciate that. That gives me a confidence. Is Thanks, there any- yeah, if, if you can go there, do it. I just highly, highly recommend it. Thanks, Megan. Love it. Oh, wonderful. Is there anyone else who would like to say anything or um, ask questions before we let Dominic go? Just shoot. I'm here. Yeah. Use the time. (laughs) You can unmute or you can type in the the question, in the chat. It's up to you. Maybe Federica has a question. Federica, we're going to pick on you. (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. Uh, either she's fumbling with her mic or she's uh, driving or something like that. That often can happen. So there's one chat. There's a question in the chat I could answer. If the wisdom teeth are not impacted, is it advisable to not extract them? If your wisdom teeth are perfectly aligned, this is what nature had us designed to be. Then obviously you leave you. <laughs> That's the best thing that can happen. But unfortunately, as we realize in the Western world, it's not the case. But if I see, sometimes I see patients with like beautiful jaws and like all teeth aligned and the wisdom teeth. And I'm like, have you had braces? And they're like, no, I was just grown that way. And I'm like amazed. Is that even possible? It mm. should be the other way around. And this is where we have to work on. So at least that my kids don't need, I don't know if you can have it the next generation, but at least my grandchildren should be perfectly fine because I already apply everything with my kids. We breastfed them for 18 to even 28 <laughs> months. Not me. That was my wife, obviously. And 18 months is actually the minimum of breastfeeding to grow that jaw and to train the nose breathing. So jawbone gets forward from breastfeeding, from sucking on the nipple. Mm. Nipple. Or oh, breast sucking on the breast. I don't know what you say. Yeah. And also, if you suck, you need to breathe through your nose. That makes your palate wide. Mm. So breastfeeding. And obviously, if your mom, if the mom is optimized, and feeds cream through the breast because she knows what to eat and what to give the baby even better. That's something we have to teach as a biological dentist. That's where my food design, thinking in nutrients, the bone healing protocol comes in. The whole, the the online course that I've newly, it's not launched yet, but it's existing already. It's a 10 day course that helps on all these fronts. Which is, is that actually, just for dentists or can no 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 opposite opposite it's for patients it's the it is for dentists and patients it's the onboarding for all my new patients so when you book in and you know your treatment plan you maybe have a waiting period of let's say three to six weeks until I see you in this case you will learn all the things online nutrition everything about the health killers how to design your nutrients how to design your micronutrients neurotransmitters everything. And then when you see me, you're already on another level and we can go dig really deep. Mm. And also I use it as onboarding for new dentists and new new nurses, et cetera. One thing we didn't ask is how much is this treatment or is it different for everybody? This is something you cannot answer because it's really different for everybody. Mm. So let's say, yeah. Yeah, you really can't shoot numbers because every single person has a different, yeah. Mm. thing to do like obviously you could say cavitations for cavitations would be this and this that's possible but i usually don't shoot numbers because i need to double check with the with the back office and and then in the preliminary treatment band you get more like you get the preliminary treatment band and at the end it will say a rough estimate is this if you want to have it perfectly and if this is something you want to do, then we take the time and do this, the real cost estimate. I shoot out numbers that are roughly correct. Mm. Okay. So if somebody wants to get an estimate, they can send you an email. We have all of your details in the show notes, or they can just go to um, website. the website, which is, uh, I don't, do I have yeah, here? It is dot DNA, DNA aesthetics, right? Yes, but the easiest is also I, my Instagram. And then you go on the tab bio, which is the link in my bio, which will bring you directly to the clinic too. So if you cannot remember DNA aesthetics, then, um, but it's probably in the show Dr. notes. Dr. Yeah, I'll have everything in the show notes. Federica's got her night going. Anything you'd like to say before we go? Oh my gosh, just give me one second. Okay. Um, 
first of all, I mean, I was just doing some stuff. No, I just wanna, I read your book and it was so eye-opening. Like my mouth is a disaster. Literally, I got about 10 root canals. I got oh. five out. Yeah. It's, How old are uh, you, Federica? Uh, like 40, my age. 42, huh? yeah. About 42. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. It's, it's just been my my family dentist when I was little. Like I was eating a lot of sugar and like he did the job not done properly. And I live in Australia most of the time. And the problem, I found out about the problem when I was there. So I got five teeth out. I need to remove other five. But, but if you can, if you just remove teeth, then, then you're left with no teeth. I know, I know. So I would probably rather focus on a strategy where you maybe, because the teeth, the root canals, you can still bite on them. Mm. Yeah, but if you take it out and you don't do anything immediately, you lose your bone. And then it might be really difficult later on because mm. you're only 42. Yeah, then that's what I got told. I saw a biological dentist here near where my family is because I got an amalgam pulled out, uh, to, to whatever, taken out. And uh, they said they would need to add some bone already. Yeah, so then, then I, what I would do is the five are gone. You cannot do anything about it. You probably need a bone graft. But maybe, I don't know if you want to fly out from Australia. It's possible. I have a lot of patients coming in from Australia. Fun. It's possible. Um, yeah, yeah. It's actually just one flight away. So the, 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 actually the earth is quite tiny if you see it that way. And, and a few days of recovery from the yeah. flight few days recovery from the flight because you would probably you would probably have to plan this as a as a treatment as a treat and treatment treat in treatment right is a treat <laughs> for you you have to take yeah. the time for you yeah. this is why we always have a week or even longer where people stay before they fly and there's no fly in fly out with us it's always mm -hmm. you have to take your time i want to get you into parasympathetic nervous system on you out of stress I believe in the matrix and in the universe. And in um, if you're now here listening in, it should teach you something. So I would probably not remove more root canals without having a solid strategy because otherwise you end up having okay. a prosthesis with 42 years of age. Not cool. No, Rather focus on everything optimal health that you can to compensate for these root mm -hmm. canals and save some money or whatever. Or send, us a prelim uh, send us a panoramic x-ray and I plan the case. Okay. Um, I think that's the better idea. Okay. Thank yeah. you. You're very welcome. Thanks. And uh, you should translate your book in Italian because like I'm trying to explain my mom and my family. Are you Italian? I was born in Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Not yet in Italian. So I don't, unfortunately, it's not my, I didn't self-publish. So it is translated in French, but not Italian. Maybe there will be someone uh, interested in about it. It's also not in Spanish yet. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but lucky but weird enough, it's translated to Chinese, and oh, wow, Chinese. Estonian, and yeah, it's when somebody gets interested, they will ask the publisher, which is I think it's Random House, and mm -hmm. then they give out the rights or whatever. So I was yeah. I was just writing it, and six years ago, I didn't know anything about contracts or whatever. I was just like, okay, I want to help as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is a book good for this? Yes, I do it. Uh, didn't know anything about. Because people think I'm crazy. People don't believe me. Huh? My parents don't believe me about all the stuff that it's causing my health problems. Yeah, of course. That's the problem. And also the dentists will, most dentists will tell you it's all bullshit because it's new. And I've been, I've been attacked for the last 10 years a lot. Now it's finally luckily catching up. And now it's the time to, that people are hopping on the bandwagon and calling themselves biological dentists. And they don't even have any idea of what they're doing. So patients are now getting fooled by marketing, which is really sad. So I have to probably create another certification level um, so that it's the stuff that we do. But you can always come see us. And it's actually your health, your journey. It's not about your parents. I know, uh, I know, I know. You know in your heart what you have to do. So I'm here yeah. if you need me. No worries. Yeah, There's thank you. Of course. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. To add to that, uh, last week I had an interview with Dr. Dale Bredesen, who is a neurodegenerative uh, expert, 
and he specialty is Alzheimer's. And so he did mention that it was very important to take care of your oral microbiome because that may affect your risk of Alzheimer's. So uh, that was, that was amazing. So I'm going to let you go, get, get home to your, your family. Uh, I want to mention you have this online course and you said there was a special for anyone listening to the Hack My Age podcast for $1.99. It's actually, normal. What? I actually gave it to you for, I gave you the link for 99 99 Because yeah. you said it's normally $399. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. That's amazing. Maybe I sent you the new link because we didn't launch it yet. And I thought, okay, 99 is even better because I don't want to make money on this. I just want to give the information for as many people as possible. Oh, thank you so much. I'll have that link in the show notes as well. I appreciate every single second you have given to us. Is there uh, any last things you would like to mention for a woman in her 50s or something we missed? Yes, especially for women in their 50s. There is a solution for everything that is going on. It's probably not all just in the mouth, but it's if you do already everything, optimizing your health, which is important, lifestyle, nutrition, all the things from biohacking and, and health optimization, but you're not superhuman. It is important to focus on your teeth because in your 50s, you probably had a dental career starting with amalgam, having a few root canals and all these health killers that we talked about. This is something you need to fix and we're here for this. So... There is a solution. That's the that's the clue to this. And you have to take responsibility. Just text us or whatever, and I'll, I'll watch the cause, and then we can take your health to the next level, starting from the mouth, right? Yes. Thank you. Yes, I'm. Everybody can follow you on Instagram, Doctor Dome One, and uh-huh. and I have links to that. Your website, DNA Aesthetics. It's you give so much great content. You have a YouTube channel as well so much information. You are so generous with your time, with your information. I appreciate it so much. I hope to see you in Germany myself. I'm sending you my x-rays. <laughs> yes, you will definitely come and I'll do, I'll help you on that journey. That's next yes. level for you. Then bringing my kids and my husband and the whole family Everyone. right after that. Everyone. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, your husband. Maybe he has a couple of other health killers that you don't even know about. Yeah, well, they just are very good at covering root canals. And they, the teeth look amazing. I will send you this new link and then you put this in the show notes. Okay, perfect. With- well, have a wonderful day, night, good morning, wherever you guys are listening in. Dr. Dom, thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much, Sora. And I hope you see you very soon. And send me your stuff, and I'm happy to plan for you.